Hello everyone. This is Rida Nas and today we will solve exercise of chapter 14 respiration. Kindly subscribe this channel and don't forget to press the bell icon so you will get notifications of all videos for free. Let's start solving exercise. Part B. Short questions. Question number 1. What are the causes of tuberculosis? Answer. Causes of tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is a serious illness that mainly affects the lungs. Tuberculosis is caused by bacteria. It can spread through close contact with people who have TB and have symptoms, active TB. Question number 2. State the signs and symptoms of otitis media. Answer. Signs and symptoms of otitis media. Otitis media is an of the inflammation of the middle ear. Some of the signs and symptoms of otitis media are sudden, severe earache, deafness and tinnitus, sense of fullness in the ear, irritability, fever, headache, a change in appetite or sleeping patterns, fluid leaking from the ear, nausea, difficulty in speaking and hearing. Question number 3. Describe the role of respiratory pigments in human. Answer. Role of respiratory pigments in humans. A respiratory pigments is a molecule that involves in transport or storage of respiratory gases. The pigment that helps in carrying oxygen from the lungs to all parts of the body is known as respiratory pigment. Hemoglobin is the iron-containing respiratory pigment in humans and is present in the red blood cells. Hemoglobin is a tetrameric protein and contains the heme prosthetic group attached to each subunit. Question number 4. Give any two factors that affect the oxygen-carrying capacity of blood. Answer. Carbon dioxide levels and blood pH can affect oxygen's carrying capacity and delivery. A decrease in the oxygen-carrying ability of hemoglobin is observed with an increase in carbon dioxide and temperature as well as a decrease in pH within the body. Question number 5. To what human body can have the involuntary control of breathing? Answer. Breathing usually does not require any thought, because it is controlled by the autonomic nervous system, also called the involuntary nervous system. The parasympathetic system slows your breathing rate. It causes your bronchial tubes to narrow and the pulmonary blood vessels to widen. Part C. Long questions. Question number 1. Describe the structure of human respiratory system. Answer. Structure of human respiratory system. The human respiratory system is a complex network of organs and structures that work together to facilitate the exchange of gases between the body and the external environment. It consists of the following key components. Nose and nasal cavity. The respiratory process begins as air is drawn in through the nose or mouth. The nose contains hair and mucous membranes that help filter, moisten, and warm the incoming air. The nasal cavity further warms and humidifies the air. Pharynx, throat. The air then passes through the pharynx, a tube-like structure at the back of the throat. It serves as a common pathway for both air and food. Larynx, voice box. Below the pharynx lies the larynx, which contains the vocal cords. It plays a crucial role in producing sound and preventing food and liquids from entering the respiratory tract. Trachea Windpipe The trachea is a long, flexible tube that connects the larynx to the bronchi. It is lined with cilia and mucus-producing cells that help trap foreign particles and move them upward towards the throat in a process called mucociliary clearance. Bronchi and bronchioles, the trachea branches into two bronchi, each leading to one lung. Inside the lungs, these bronchi further divide into smaller bronchioles, which continue branching into even smaller tubes. These structures serve to distribute air within the lungs. Alveoli, at the end of the bronchioles are tiny air sacs called alveoli. These sacs are the site of gas exchange. The walls of the alveoli are thin and surrounded by a network of capillaries. Oxygen from inhaled air diffuses through the alveolar walls into the bloodstream, while carbon dioxide from the blood diffuses into the alveoli to be exhaled. Lungs The lungs are paired, cone-shaped organs located in the chest cavity. 
They are enclosed by a double-layered membrane called the pleura. The right lung has three lobes, while the left lung has two lobes due to the presence of the heart. Diaphragm. Beneath the lungs lies the diaphragm, a dome-shaped muscle that plays a crucial role in breathing. When it contracts, the volume of the chest cavity increases, causing inhalation. When it relaxes, the volume decreases, leading to exhalation. The respiratory system works in coordination with the circulatory system to ensure the delivery of oxygen to cells and the removal of carbon dioxide waste. This intricate system of organs and structures allows humans to breathe, facilitating the exchange of gases necessary for cellular respiration and overall bodily functions. Question number 2. Describe the mechanisms of breathing in man. Answer. Mechanism of breathing in man. Breathing in humans involves a process called ventilation, which includes two main phases, inspiration and expiration. During inspiration, the diaphragm and external intercostal muscles contract, causing the ribcage to expand and the diaphragm to flatten. This increases the thoracic cavity volume, leading to a decrease in intrapulmonary pressure. As a result, air rushes into the lungs, following the pressure gradient. During expiration, the diaphragm and external intercostal muscles relax. The elastic recoil of lung tissues and the chest wall, along with contraction of internal intercostal muscles during forced expiration, decrease thoracic cavity volume. This increases intrapulmonary pressure, causing air to be pushed out of the lungs. Gas exchange occurs across the respiratory membrane in the alveoli, where oxygen diffuses from the alveoli into the blood and carbon dioxide diffuses from the blood into the alveoli. This process is driven by concentration gradients and facilitated by the thin respiratory membrane. The respiratory control center in the brainstem regulates breathing by monitoring carbon dioxide levels in the blood. When carbon dioxide levels rise, the brain sends signals to increase the rate and depth of breathing. Conversely, low carbon dioxide levels lead to decreased breathing rates. This intricate process ensures a constant supply of oxygen to the body and removal of carbon dioxide, supporting vital metabolic activities. Question number 3. Describe the role of respiratory pigments in transport and storage of respiratory gases. Answer. Role of respiratory pigments in transport and storage of respiratory gases. Respiratory pigments are specialized molecules found in the blood of many organisms, including humans, that are responsible for efficiently transporting and storing respiratory gases, primarily oxygen, O2, and carbon dioxide, CO2. One of the most important respiratory pigments in humans is hemoglobin, which is contained within red blood cells. One oxygen transport in the lungs where oxygen concentration is high due to the inhalation of air, hemoglobin binds to oxygen molecules, forming a compound called oxyhemoglobin. This combination is essential because oxygen is not very soluble in plasma, the liquid component of blood, alone. Hemoglobin greatly enhances the blood's oxygen-carrying capacity, allowing it to carry a larger amount of oxygen than would be possible without the pigment. As blood flows through capillaries in tissues where oxygen levels are lower, oxyhemoglobin releases its oxygen molecules, enabling oxygen to diffuse into surrounding cells for energy production through cellular respiration. 2. Carbon dioxide transport As tissues carry out metabolic processes, they produce carbon dioxide as a waste product. Carbon dioxide is less soluble in plasma compared to oxygen, so it needs to be transported in a form that is more soluble. Hemoglobin helps with this by binding to carbon dioxide to form a compound known as carbaminohemoglobin. This facilitates the removal of carbon dioxide from tissues and its transport to the lungs for exhalation. 3. Buffering Capacity Hemoglobin also acts as a buffer helping to maintain the pH of blood within a narrow range. During cellular respiration, carbon dioxide is produced, which can combine with water to form carbonic acid. 
The presence of hemoglobin minimizes pH changes by binding to hydrogen ions released when carbonic acid dissociates, preventing drastic shifts in blood acidity. 4. Bohr effect and oxygen release The Bohr effect is a phenomenon where increased levels of carbon dioxide or a decrease in pH, more acidic conditions, in tissues enhance the release of oxygen from hemoglobin. This is beneficial because it allows oxygen to be released more readily in tissues with higher metabolic activity and greater oxygen demand. In short, respiratory pigments like hemoglobin are crucial for the effective transport and storage of respiratory gases. By binding to oxygen and carbon dioxide, they increase the solubility of these gases in the blood and enhance their movement between the lungs and tissues. This dynamic process ensures that cells receive the necessary oxygen for energy production while efficiently removing carbon dioxide waste. That's all for today. Thanks for watching this video. If you find this video helpful then subscribe this channel and share this video with your friends. If you want video on any topic then leave a comment in comment section. I will make video on that topic. Take great care of yourself. Good luck.